Jets versus Patriots, Thursday night football. Let's talk about it and give a prediction at the end. First up, the Jets are 1-1. One one. They got beat handily by the 49ers in Week 1, but they did ink out a win at Tennessee in Week 2. However, it was closer than a lot of people thought. Tyler Boyd practically dropped the touchdown pass at the very end of the game to tie the game. The offense sometimes looks just as choppy as it did last year. However, the difference is Aaron Rodgers is at quarterback, but it's still concerning. When you look at their first drives versus Tennessee, their first three, 12 plays, 15 yards, three punts. Not good stuff. And the Titans defense, yes, it's good, but it's not near the top 10, I don't think. The Patriots, on the other hand, do have a top 10 defense. Now, the real issue for this Jets team is sometimes the offensive line looks like it can't get a real push. Now, this is despite the fact that they have some electric playmakers like Brees Hall in the backfield. Aaron Rodgers has made do so far with what the Jets offensive line has been able to give him. They are better than last year, but I don't think they're as good as people expect them to be, and they're definitely not as good to play against a top-tier defensive line like the Patriots and succeed at a high level. So those are two major concerns that I have for the Jets so far. On the other hand, in the defensive side of the football, the run game is pretty atrocious. The Jets are giving up 155 yards a game. It looks like they can't stop a bloody nose. I mean, it's, it's really bad, and I expected a lot more from a Jets defense that played at a top-five level all last season, and they didn't really lose anybody. The one factor is that I think the Jets are missing is chemistry. There's a lot of noise going on in this Jets team. Tons of stuff over the offseason. And currently, one of their defensive players that are supposed to be one of the better ones, Hassan Reddick, has been sitting out so far this season waiting on a new contract. I don't know if that will get resolved anytime soon, but... Two major concerns for the Jets there. The Patriots, they dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides. They're top five in the NFL in rushing yards per game, and they're second in the league in rushing yards allowed on the defensive side of the football. So big stuff from their offense and defensive line. I'm really impressed with what they've done so far this season. In week one, they upset the Bengals, and in week two, they lost in overtime to the Seahawks at home. But that's what I want to talk about next. This is the major concern for the Patriots. Situationally, they have severe limitations. In the red zone, touchdown scoring percentage is 37 and a half. That's horrible. It's one of the top 10, or I'm sorry, the bottom 10 in the league. 38% on third down, which is not bad by any means, but it's not great at all. And then last but not least, there's only maybe 100 or so passing yards for the Patriots each game. I think they're averaging 122 and a half passing yards per game right now. That's also not great. Jacoby Brissett, a veteran quarterback, but lacks weapons and lacks the talent that some of these other quarterbacks like it Aaron Rodgers has. So the Patriots are very one-dimensional on the offensive side of the football. Now the defense... I think it looks as good as it did in the Belichick era, especially in the second half versus the Seahawks. They allowed only three points, and unfortunately, those three points were the ones that sent the game to overtime, and then in overtime, the, the gates opened wide open, and the game was over. The Seahawks won with a game-winning field goal after a game-winning drive from Geno Smith, but Jabril Peppers is the captain of this defense, in my opinion, and he's one of the best safeties in the league. I don't think people talk about him like that, but I definitely want to give him his props. But going back to the offensive side of the football, if the Patriots want to win this game, they've got to pound the rock, and that's exactly what I think they're going to do in this game. My prediction, the Patriots are going to run all over the Jets, and I think they're going to turn the Jets into a one-dimensional team. The fact that they are pretty much dead last in rushing yards per game right now. Maybe not dead last, but bottom 10 in the league, the Jets, in rushing yards per game, and the Patriots are so good against the run. The Jets are going to be forced to pass the football, and I think that's something that the Patriots will be prepared for. I've got this being an absolute horrendously ugly Thursday night football game per the usual on Amazon Prime. I've got the Patriots winning 17-16. to Now, the two X factors that I want to talk about that could make a difference in this game... The Patriots' offensive line, every single one of the starters are questionable. If some of those guys miss the game, then maybe I would go with the Jets. But on the other side of the football, the X-Factor for the Jets, 
Backup running back, Braylon Allen, very young. I think he might be the youngest player in the league right now. Last week, nine touches, 50 plus yards, and two touchdowns. If he can have a game like that versus the Patriots, it'll be over and the Jets will win pretty much in a landslide. But my pick right now is the Patriots plus six and a half. I think that they can win outright, but that's not something that I would advise anyone else to take. The six and a half points is way too many for an ugly Thursday night game between two very limited offenses. So that's going to do it for the Jets preview. We'll be doing some NFL picks later in the week. Stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.